In our daily lives, we come across a large variety of things that differ in shapes, sizes and compositions. For example, a table we use to study, the water we drink, a gas cylinder we use for cooking food and the food that we eat. All these different things are called matter. We define matter as anything that occupies space and has mass. Can you recall all different forms of matter around you? Owing to the large number and complexity of different types of matter, a need arises to classify them. Ancient philosophers believed that matter or padar was made up of five fundamental elements called the panchatatva. Air means vayu, earth means prithvi, fire means agni, sky means akash and water means jal. The modern day scientists can now evidently classify matter based on its physical and chemical properties. Physically, matter can be classified into solids, liquids and gases. Chemically, matter can be classified into elements, compounds and mixtures. Now that we have classified matter, let us try to understand the nature of matter, whether it is continuous or particulate and to answer this, we will discuss the case of sugar dissolved in water. Let us take a glass having water in it. Add a tablespoon of sugar in it and stir it. At first, we see tiny sugar particles continuously moving in water. But gradually, they dissolve in water, forming a clear sugar solution. We get a sweet sugar solution at the end, which cannot be seen by us. One must ask, what happens to the sugar and where does it go? The only way to explain this is by the idea of matter being particulate in nature. From the viewpoint of chemistry, both sugar and water are made up of particles. When sugar is dissolved in water, the sugar particles occupy spaces between the water particles and mix with them. Performing a similar experiment with salt would give us a clear salt solution that would be salty in taste. These findings conclude that matter is particulate in nature, which means that it is made up of particles. Let us further increase our understanding about the size of the particles of matter by studying classical example of dissolution of potassium permanganate in water. We take beakers having water and add few crystals of potassium permanganate to the first beaker on the left. It can be seen that even a small amount of potassium permanganate crystals can gradually turn the whole beaker purple, which occurs due to the dissolution of crystals in water. Following this, we add a small amount of this solution in another beaker, having clear water, and keep diluting the solution like this many times. With each dilution, the color of the solution gradually fades, but does not become colorless completely. We therefore conclude that there are millions of tiny particles of potassium permanganate that keep dividing themselves after each dilution and that particles of matter are very small indeed. Such a phenomenon can very well explain the fading of ink solution on repeated dilution. At this stage, let us recall what all we have learned. 